Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm with the wonderful Sally Eston. And how are you today, Sally? I'm terrific, thank you. Um, my soul is feeling very satisfied. So, um, yes, I'm in a very good mood. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just Tuesday. Had a workout, nice to be had here. clients, so yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't have a workout. I got, got up at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> you got up at 10? <laughs> oh, that's the... Yeah. Must have needed had it. Had an espresso, had an espresso in bed. Right. And then got up with another one. <laughs> Did you happen to sort of graze on any inappropriate food this morning, or no? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Our topic today, all about comfort eating. And uh, that's right. Um, it's not a, it's not a, not a problem I've ever had, but it's certainly a problem I see all over. All the, the time. All the time. Waistline stretching. And it's a really big issue. It's, yeah. it, and, and it's all around comfort, as you're saying. It's all around comfort. And, um, you know, the obesity crisis that we had here, the overweight and obesity crisis in Australia and around the world, it's all linked to this emotional eating. And um, when you look behind it, a lot of it is, is fueled by stress. Too much stress and yes. trying to and unable to cope or inability to, to deal with the stress. And um, it was interesting looking at all the stats, but you know, stress was sort of the key factor behind a lot of the emotional eating. Um, it's yes. yeah, it, it's frightening because I think it what is this in Australia, 63% of Aussies are overweight or obese. Like it's the two out of three. We've discussed this often before, but that that's huge. And of those that are overweight. No, 83% are emotional eaters. So the emotions are driving the <laughs> obesity epidemic. You know, it, it's huge. That's right. Um, I, I'm, I've just finished reading this awesome book by John Sortel called Change Your Life. And what he, he covers is what the scripts that constrain us in our lives. So, you know, I'm no good, no one will love me, you know, and so on but he he's got three character four characters in there that he he weaves his magic around yeah one of them is a very overweight executive and um, her reason for being big is that she believes no one will notice her unless she's big really yeah so this you know it's just that was really interesting because i wouldn't have imagined that no because, yeah for. that's really interesting because um, the people that do tend to overeat, the emotional eaters, actually often have the feelings of guilt, shame, and, and low self-esteem. They just you just want to hide, and um, you know, and they then they feel guilty about it. Um, yeah. Oh, or it's sometimes, interesting. Or sometimes they need protection. I mean, it is a protection physically. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, victims of sexual abuse, early sexual abuse, mm. often um, have the low self-esteem and. You know, mm. got this great protection around them. Yeah, to I'm just repel any, to repel anybody. You know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, awful. Awful. Mm. Um, I was reading in the American Psychological Association. Yeah, that that was a big um, emphasis on stress influencing it, the eating habits. But it, and then it's looking at what you're eating. It's the unhealthy foods. It's the high fat and high sugar foods are often the, the things that you're grazing on or, you know, emotionally eating with it. So it's not even eating too much or eating too often. It's what you're actually eating and what you're reaching for. Those highly processed, you know, hot chips or whatever, packets of chips, that sort of stuff. Especially, yeah, especially the really, you know, the gourmet chips. <laughs> with, with, with bits of truffle in them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were discussing this the other day. The algae <laughs> chips. <laughs> stuff like that but you know those that are eating the unhealthy foods because of the stress the emotional eating they, they end up feeling sluggish and lazy and they feel bad about their bodies so it's, it's not a win-win situation it's a you know it's it's awful um they found 38 percent 38 percent of people had overeaten or eaten unhealthy foods in the last month of the study that they did that's like you know just under a half had eaten crappy food and 49%, so basically half, do it weekly or more. So it's not uncommon, it's, it, and it's turned into a habit. And 33%, um, oh. sorry, go on. Oh, my God, you're the statistics queen this week. I am today. I have, I've got so many stats coming out of my butt. 33% of people are emotionally eating because of the stress, and it helps them distance from stress. 
And then 34% of, of everyone that took part said it's just now a habit that they just do it. They don't even think about it. Yeah. That led into yeah. a really interesting percentage I found here. Did you know this? Oh, I am full of stats today. Every day we make 221 food-related decisions every single day. But less than 20 of those are conscious decisions. All the rest is just sort of unconscious, but just habits. This, this, this is really important. Um, you know, I had a one-on-one -on -one with one of my lovely networking ladies from breakfast, and that's her specialty, dealing with women who overeat. And, and she, she explained that often you can have eaten a whole lot of stuff mm -hmm. and then you might at the end think, why did I do that? Mm. Mm. Why did I eat? And you don't know. I mean, for myself, sometimes I get up in the middle of the night to have a pee and then I'll whip off the kitchen and have a, a few nuts. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> a few <laughs> cashews. And, um, you make me laugh. But, it was interesting after after hearing that story from her i'm going to pause and try and dig into why i want those cashews at two in the morning yeah and i don't know yeah so it, it's it, that's the key to understand the why understand the why i mean yes i thought that was frightening out of 221 choices each day 20 of them or less we're actually conscious of and linking into feeling bad about the, 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 the eating part with some more stats here, the after effects of overeating or eating crappy food, 49% of people feel disappointed in themselves. So that's half of people that have done their pig out or whatever, just feel really down on themselves. They feel bad about their bodies, 46%. So almost half again, and 36% feel sluggish or lazy. And um, another thing about the emotional eating, it's also linking in with um, skipping meals as well. I mean, it's a little bit different, but there's a, quite a high percentage of people that skip meals just because they're too busy or they're too stressed. I think I had a stat about that. Yeah, um, yeah. That people are actually, because of the stress, instead of overeating, they're just not eating because they're too stressed. Um, so you get into these bad habits and you get into these spirals, these self-reinforcing spirals. Yeah. But I mean, some of the other reasons why people eat is because they're bored. Yep. They're lonely. Lonely. Yep. Sad. Um, they're sad. Um, habit you've covered. But but serving size is another, you know, if you're there and you've yep. got this clean plate syndrome. I've got yep. to eat it all because it's on the plate in front of me. Because of the starving kids in some third world country. Is that, that was how we were all brought up. So last night we had dinner and it was too much and both of us didn't finish. Yeah. Yeah. You're spot okay. off. Yeah. Yeah. It's what you eat, how much you eat, and when you eat contributes to that. So but one of the reasons why people eat is because if you if you take in sugar or carbs, the same thing, so you generate a dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. Yep. So it's feeling down. You know, there's there's a there's a good biological reason why food will lift your mood. Mm. It doesn't sort out the cause. Mm. Mm. But, you know, you get that sugar hit and you feel fantastic and then it's that very dip down low afterwards. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. Viral. yeah, hormones have a lot to play around this as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I found uh, out of all, you know, we were just talking about all the um, overweight and obesity in Australia, but did you know 90% of women who struggle with their weight are comfort eaters? So it's like women are right up there. It's 86% of men, so it's still high, but, you know, basically... Those that are struggling with their weight are comfort eaters, basically. It's, um, yeah, yeah, that's very sad. Yeah, very sad. Sugar, fat, and salt that's what the fast food people give us, isn't it? Yep, yep. Trans fatty acids, Ugh. Ooh. all that really greasy fish and chips, and <laughs> but really nice double cooked chips <laughs> to die for. <laughs> funny well that's sometimes and that's the thing you can it's the 80 20 rule 20 yeah. percent you know treat yourself now and again it's just that um yeah it's not an empty special yeah. yeah down yeah. the coast is this fish and chip shop that's just to die for <laughs> you, you, you rock up and there's like it's a it's a one and a half hour wait at lunchtime really wow yeah, it's it's famous lovely. just in a it's in a little town it's beautiful wow yeah. in in whereabouts which coast Ah, I'd have to remember like the name. Oh, I can't remember the name. 
Uh, it's it's on the south coast, south of Batemans Bay, between halfway between Batemans Bay and the Victorian border. Oh, along that Sapphire Coast. Yeah, that's right. Beautiful. It's stunning. Stunning. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. So it's good to have little little rewards. Mm -hmm. You know, like I I don't have chips every week even, but yep. sometimes on Friday night. Yeah. We have the chips with a nice glass of wine and it's very nice. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. But I mean, talking about emotionally eating, I used to when I was when the kids were little, stuck at home and it was corn chips, that was my thing, whatever it was. But you know, feeling stressed wow. and just exhausted, tired, worn out. And it's like, you know, I just grab some stuff. You know, sitting down on the couch at ten thirty or something, absolutely exhausted, and then start eating. And I found that with a number of my clients, it's the night time that gets people. You know, once the kids have gone to bed and they're exhausted and just want to put their feet up and have a glass of wine or whatever, and then it's just the food yeah. starts coming out, the biscuits and cheese. Those corn, those corn chips are terrible. If you they are the disgusting on every level. Over two thousand calories a packet. People aren't aware of chips and corn chips. One, it's full of crap. But, but two, the, the number of calories in there, it's just, it's just empty food, empty calories. I occasionally look at the packets and so many additives. Oh, mm. Mm. well, here's a good story. So my eldest, he had never had a bad thing in his mouth until he was two. I had uh, a babysitter looking after him one time and she gave him only two corn chips and he went, he went off. He just, his behavior was crazy and it was the additives and colors in there or whatever because he'd never had anything like that and his system was so clean yeah yeah on chips and he went crazy <laughs> yeah mm. i hope you sacked her <laughs> yeah but that i mean that is the really big thing around emotional eating as well it's what you're eating and when you're eating it you know what is stopping and having a look at your triggers is always oh that leads into all my steps and models let's bring up your model today harry <laughs> Okay, I've done a good model. So the first thing for me is to pause. Yep. And if you pause, it, it allows you to be conscious. Mm -hmm. And then you can identify whether you're peckish or not. Yep. Are you really hungry? If you're, and depending on your answer to that, you can eat or not. And that's fine. If, if you're hungry, eat. It gives you a choice. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you picked up, you know, you've got the impulse to eat, but you're not hungry that gives you the opportunity to probe, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And if you delve deep, you can then identify the cause. And these causes are usually deep seated and, re and they embody scripts and they, they provide roadblocks for you, um, which constrain how you behave. Mm. And so um, if, if you can, delve deep on this topic you can actually build your self-awareness and you can build your sense of completeness mm. love it you it, always love my models you're very I do, I, I do love them because they're well thought out but also and it does come down to having that self-awareness just being aware of your habits and then why you're doing them it's a really good point mm. but my model was similar but it's a little bit different so and i haven't got it in palette sorry but um if you are able to uh, reduce the actual stress in your life, like manage the stress, and then um, emotionally tip those emotions to feel happier, build up your self-love to build up your self-esteem, and then you will start feeling um, happier, not so sad or lonely or whatever, but work on the emotions of, of doing things that make you feel happier, then you're going to get your mindset in a much better space. Then when you've got your emotions lifted and you're feeling happier and you have your brain thinking in a positive way, so flip those negative thoughts into more positive ones, then you're going to be more motivated to, to uh, clean eat and then you know, limit your emotional eating. And then when your brain is thinking in a positive way and you're, you're flipping negative thoughts into more positive ones and you're reducing the stress around you or managing your stress, well, then your hormones are going to be more leveled. You're going to be, have less, less um, stress hormones going through your system, adrenaline, all that sort of stuff, and, and release more happy ones because you'll be feeling more content. And overall, if your stress is reduced, your emotions are intact, and your brain is thinking in a positive way, you're going to be eating healthy, um, healthy eating, have a healthy weight, and have less stress in your life. Mm, 
Hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's so much stress, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's the number one thing thing affecting everyone in the world. Stress and lack of energy, and it's just yeah. not getting any better. So we, the stress is always going to be around. It's just how we manage it, and that's yeah. you know, it's working on the mindset of, with people, really. Yeah. To, so that it doesn't cause all these mental health issues and things. I mean, stress is literally a killer. It is a killer. Mm. Mm. It's frightening. Yeah. And it does lead, as we've discovered, into emotional eating, how people mm. cope with the stress. Yeah, the other thing that we haven't mentioned is it's, it's often, it can be dehydration that's causing you to feel hungry. Ooh, so staying funny. hydrated is really important. And you can also just displace a feeling of hunger. Yeah by drinking water. Yeah, it's a really, really good point because 80% of people are, are chronically dehydrated. Like that's four out of five people. <laughs> I know, I know. I just mm. Here we go. <laughs> you a dribbler? <laughs> <laughs> I often dribble, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I know, because sometimes I'm, I'm driving and it just goes all down the front of me and I think, well, it's only water, it'll dry off because I a lot of water. I, I have a view that that's because the container is badly designed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Oh, too funny. Now, I had a few um, steps to reduce comfort. Oh, eating. good, good. I look forward to those. So <laughs> number one is manage your stress. So shift your mindset to deal with the perceived negatives going around and things that are, you feel are causing you stress and step into the positivity and the gratitude. So shifting your mindset will help manage your stress. Be mindful. Be mindful of your triggers, what sets you off. So having that awareness of like, why am I doing this? Uh, is it every time the kid cries, I go and <laughs> eat a Tim Tam or something? I don't know. Um, and then oh, those double chocolate coated Tim Tams. Oh yeah. no! Oh, you see, I don't eat chocolate anymore. But so they, Did, I know they would. Don't eat chocolate. Chocolate's actually quite good for you. I gave it up. Seventy percent or better. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the dark that's, chocolate, the Aldi. That's another. That's another thing. I have so many female clients who, if you give them a bar of chocolate, they wolf the whole thing down. <laughs> That, that used to be me when I was a comfort eater. It was, um, oh, what's the one um, with the nuts in it? Let oh. me show you this. This is so cool. So this is, oh, yeah. this is 60%. But why I like it is because it's got 18 pieces there. Oh. And they're actually, I actually hand these out to clients sometimes. Like I had a mum. Yeah, so they have, they're separate pieces. Right. Not a block. So I had a mum who got a letter from NDIS yesterday and she was in shock. She was traumatised by it. So I said, well, first of all, we'll do a couple of deep breaths. Then I'm going to give you a bit of chocolate. And she said, oh, no, no, I shouldn't take it. I said, yeah, take it, take it. You'll feel better. <laughs> and afterwards, she felt better. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So that's one solution for people who can't kick the chocolate habit. And dark chocolate is good for you. Mm. It's got antioxidants, a whole lot of health benefits. Yeah. Think about something like this, which isn't a bar. It's 18 pieces. Yes. Something like that will last me a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, that's yeah. the same as like having a jelly bean, you know, just having one jelly bean. Oh, no, no, no. Can't have a jelly bean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's one of my weaknesses. I can't do that. <laughs> I used to love the black ones. That was the only colour I'd eat. <laughs> so oh, yeah, funny. right. <laughs> and my third tip was to move. Move move out all the high fat and high sugar and um, salty items out of the cupboard and move your body more and uh, eat less. <laughs> but remembering that you do need fat in your diet. Yes. And there's real advantage in, in having protein and fat in every meal. Oh, I'm a huge... Oh. So good fats are important for the brain. Fat, you just yeah. add I was talking yeah. bad fats like fried yeah, food. So bad I'm fat. a big advocate. Yeah coconut oil and avocados and all good fats. Mm. Butter. Yes, butter. Butter's very good. Yeah, yeah, I love my butter. <laughs> I get I get the New Zealand butter, the mainland butter. Yeah. Mainland yep. butter, which has no additives. In it. No additives, yeah. I've got the same. It's really good. Yeah. That's just awesome. Good it's fine. High five. Oh, <laughs> 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 I thought that, that today's topic is really, it, it's, 
it's um, very apt because it is such an issue and it's yeah. just fueling the obesity and overweight crises that we have here and around the world. And when mm. I said here that, you know, of, uh, so of those overweight, 83% are emotional eaters out of the yeah. 63% or something of Australians overweight or obese. So four out of five, say, uh, emotional eaters. That's yeah, I think I think emotional eating is a good bumper sticker. Yep, yep. Good. Well, that's good. Well, I've enjoyed so nice this week. <laughs> I, yeah. I love our catch-ups every week. And, and I love your blogs. They're very good. So I encourage everyone to uh, follow Harry and read his blogs. Mm. So maybe next week, um, just just as a topic, we could... Um, we could pro. We could we could explore the stories that we write. I think that would be awesome. And uh, yes, you can very very. That's a really good topic. It's absolutely fantastic. Power, powerful topic. Powerful topic. Powerful, powerful. Absolutely. Well, I look forward to that one, Harry. <laughs> okay. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, and I look forward to. I will do. It's a blue sky. No, not a cloud in the sky today. Sorry. You're talking Canberra weather. You're talking Melbourne here. It's nothing but clouds. <laughs> I send white. them all south. <laughs> you are so funny. All right, darling. I'll see you next week. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>